Welcome back to Tools and Track. In this episode, we're brought to you by, I don't know, we're doing bushes. Kate Bush. So our TVR from factory comes with what's called a metalastic bush. That means it's got a metal and an elastic element to it. So this being our original wishbone, that's steel. There's also a steel outer ring that is pressed into this bushing. Inside the outer ring, there will be a rubber element, basically like a big oblong donut. That's what provides the flex and the cushioning. In the middle of this, there will be another smaller metal tube that allows the bolt to go through and bolt up, nipping up the whole joint without the stock the rubber. So, how to get these out? This outer ring is pressed into the wishbone or whatever joint it's located in. That means it's an interference fit. It's not exactly going to fall out the minute we loosen it. This and this and this are also impregnated together. So the whole assembly is, for lack of a better word to say, solid. Now, there are a wide variety of methods, often preached as being the best one online for removing bushes. It's time for us to debunk, improve, and literally bench test all of these. I'm prepared for a lot of this to fail, and I'm doing it for you, my happy viewers. First up, we're going to try is a threaded bar and draw through method. And it works a little bit like this. This threaded bar with the original washer that would have held it tight. On the other end, I'm going to put a socket on that will clear the bush when it starts to draw through, followed by another substantial washer and another nut. You can see how this one should work in theory. You tighten it up, it draws the bush out. expecting this to fail. <laughs> Let's go to failure. I suspect what's happening here is that we are stretching. Yeah, that's pretty far. So it's quite clear that's not going to work. We need something a bit more heavy duty. They never really stood a chance, did it? So using the vice was slightly more successful in that it managed to completely destroy the bush. So putting heat on it, you would think would expand the outer part where the wishbone is and allow the inner part to move free. The only problem is the rubber has now turned to treacle and all I've managed to do is draw out the inner bush. I don't really think I've managed to touch the outer bush at all. Although, I might be wrong. I have to let this cool down and cut some of the waste rubber away. But it does look like a nice start to be making progress on it. So that's what's left of the inner bush. So now we're going to look at another option for removing the outer sleeve. This is a bit more archaic. Except, you know, with a lot more. Let's look at one final option we've got before we start naming industrial tooling. And that is, just butcher it. I'm quite conscious of cutting out too much of this and nicking into the outer part, which is actual wishbone, which we don't want to damage, because it'll make life really difficult for the new bushes. Just a little more. A wee tip when you're taking these bushes out so you don't take them out in a big ball of fire. You will hear crackling of the rubber starting to break down. If you put a screwdriver in, push down on it and twist, it'll start to move more and more. But they will get to a point where the rubber breaks its bond. Once it starts doing that, push down, twist, 
and lever it out. It's starting to get a bit more crackling out. Oh, crispy bacon. I'll tell you. Come on, boy. Oh. No flames. Doesn't smell great. Probably best not to breathe some of that in. Rubber part. Alt. So we're now moving on to some of the rears. After many, many, many days of removing bushes from the front. This is a rear toe adjuster. So the back suspension actually has the ability to have toe in and out adjusted as well as the front. So this, um, if you refer back to our episode of corner weighting, which you can find here, we uh, had issues because we couldn't actually adjust the toe because this was absolutely seesawed. And it was also kind of difficult to work out how it was meant to work because there's many, many bolts. So let's let's have a look at this. So in here, you've got a, a fitting, which will hold the bush and hold the, the wishbone onto the suspension. And through the back of it, there's a 19mm lock nap. And that whole thing comes out. So that's quite useful. What remains will be a lock nap. And now this is the part that actually does the fine adjustment. So I've managed to get this off, which I'm quite impressed at, considering the level of crust that was on it. However, it doesn't look great, so we might replace it. This has next to no threads left on it. Now this is threaded right the way into here, and I've put heat on it, I've put plus gas on it, and I've put, you know, old mystic curses on it, and nothing seems to be moving it. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to destroy this with some big tools and take it out and replace it. Um, I'm pretty sure no matter what TVR you've got or what vintage, you will have the same problem. There's a lot of thread, it's very fine, and it's opening the back. It's going to rust and it's going to seize up. You need to add two of those to the shopping cart. Luckily, they don't seem to be particularly expensive parts, so all going well. We'll get a couple in, and when we put the rebuild on, they'll be nice and fresh. So step one, we've got it in the vise, and we're going to heat things up as well as we can. And by heat things up, I'm going to turn it right up and make it go, because this is going to have to be really hot. I mean, really hot. Plus gas hasn't worked. Nothing seems to have worked. So it's going to be brute force and a lot of heat. We may be close to admitting defeat here with these uh, toe adjusters in the back. As you can see, I've uh, mangled the life out of them now. So they're definitely not getting reused. Uh, they're, they're seized in here good and tight. So I think what we're going to have to do is flatten this back to shiny metal, weld on a socket, and uh, hopefully a combination of the heat from the weld plus a big half inch monkey bar, we should be able to break this. So if this doesn't work, I can add 150 quid aside for new rear wishbones because there's not much else that's gonna take these out. So <laughs> fingers crossed, because I don't wanna do that. It's on it, and I wonder it's under heat. The more it's hopefully going to help break this. That's enough. Ah. Oh. Hair tools, perhaps. Old boy. Right. Boys and girls, is how you know if your welding's up to scratch. But that was a lot of banging and a lot of thumping. And it's now two more things in the shop list. Still, progress is progress. The upper rear wishbones are probably the smallest ones that we've got in the whole car. It's got its plus and its minus. That will be a very easy one to chop and pull out because there's very little meat holding in. This one will probably take a bit more effort. Uh, the big issue you're going to have is securing this guy because obviously if you're going to be hammering it you don't want to distort it and there's very little meat in this to clamp so uh, 
I'll show you how I do it and um, you can have a go see what you think. There we go. I have to breathe it in as usual. Boop. Boop. Right, so as I said, getting these clamped to cut is a bit tricky. What I do, throw them away and put toasting hot metal in my airlines. Not smart. I need to secure these in the vise, but as, uh, as you can see, they don't really fit too well. So in order to get a clamp to put some distorting in, you stick a wee socket in there. And that'll push it in just enough to hold it. Now we can chop it, chop it. So I've been trying to think what part of all of this saga I'm going to miss the most. And honestly, I think it's going to be assembling this saw in every single hole I have to cut. It's just it's just a level of f***ery that you, you don't get anywhere else in life. It's frustrating to the max, yo. And I am oh, so done with it. Now, we definitely need a new blade. Off you f***. I mean, the only positive to all of this is it's not going to need much of a thump to get it out. So, uh, heat. Now we're just about to start some more hammer based violence. However, some findings I've had during my tenure of chopping 3 million bushes out. Um, I've been using deep reach impact sockets just because they're pretty uniform and they chop it all the way out. Um, however, for the longest time I was using a little 13 mil. This guy, or is that 15? 13 mil. Is it? Is it? Sorry, it's a 16 mil. Anyway. That was doing fine and chopping all the way through, but there was one or two that was like, oh this is really struggling and it seems to be branching up. This will pass through there okay, but it's actually a bit thin for getting full purchase at the start. And what was happening was, as you can see it sits slightly proud here. So as I've been hammering the ones that are a bit more proud than others, it's mushroomed the top and I've had to drag all of that mushrooming through. So what I've now started doing is getting a 17mm, which fits alright but might be a bit tight in the hole and I'm just using that to start it, get the movement and get it down into the hole so it doesn't mushroom and then I'm using the smaller one once the head of that's in the hole to push it through. And that goes up something like this. Quick trick in hand. That's it moving. As you can see, once this goes in it starts getting a wee bit ticked. Go down to a smaller one. If you're only doing suspension, you can pretty much skip to the next part. However, this is your dismount bush. Now, this is by far the biggest bush I've found in the car yet. Taking out the dowel, as per before, push some heat on it and it will fire out. As the diameter of this is a lot bigger as well, um, we're going to use a slightly different tactic to the usual. Chop two lines in it, chop it and hope the space that you've made allows it to clear. So, let's chuck on the vise and get going. Pop. I don't think we'll be touching that. Once you've got the bush out, and you cut your usual notch just to get through the bush carrier and no more. Rather than do the usual socket trick, we will have enough slack to simply just break the guy. As you can see. We're now starting to get a split, so I'm going to run a break right down the middle. And once it's fractured all the way through, which looks a little bit like this, the whole thing will come out. Blop. Voila! So now, with everything that can be removed from the car done, there's one last bush we need to address. Sadly, it's on the chassis. Our last bush is this contentious little guy here that holds the back of the diff into the chassis. Um, same rules apply, we're just going to heat the rubber until it falls out with force. And then we're going to put a cut here and a cut here on the remainder. Um, obviously we'll need to take our time a bit with this. 
because the access isn't great. So we've used the hacksaw to very slowly and very, very painfully cut a wee groove in the bottom of this. And now, much like the front of the mount bushes, we're going to try and just break it and let it fall out rather than anything more severe than that. Just like that. That is one big pile of crusty shit. But, crucially, it is one big pile of bush-free crusty shit. Aha! Special chop! Which will allow... Honestly, I thought that was going to take a whole lot of bathing at the front. So yeah, the Milwaukee running out of puff with this one. I don't know if it's going to go down. We're going to have to bring in some reinforcements. That'll do it. And we can bolt this onto the back of the uh, Polar Bush episode. So there are three further polar bushes in here, which I don't know why I didn't think of in the first place. Uh, well, I guess we'll take them out. Yep, I forgot three out of bushes on the rear arms. Six to go. Let's wait until the smoke comes out. Top one's out, just these two bottom ones, and then same memo. This is still my first time of butane, by the way. I am, I am impressed with the volume. Just keeps going. Energi Energizer burner. Doesn't really work, does it? Burn it. So as usual, leave it to the very, very last one before I find a better way of doing things. Because that is the way. So rather than heating the outside of this and waiting for the heat to soak through the outer bush and melt the rubber, what I'm instead doing is if you heat the inner, just by throwing the flame down the centre like that, what you'll find is that it heats up the rubber a lot quicker, which means you can push the inner bush out quicker and just dig the rubber out, but it will save a lot of time. Boom! Straight out. What was I doing that? Why couldn't I have thought of that many, many hours ago? Well, my wasn't that a lot quicker. More importantly, it makes a big difference in these guys because putting heat through here to eventually hit this rubber and break the bond, my god, it, it, it took too long, so that's why I tried the inside way. And it worked, so yeah, a bit more of that and we're done. Starting to see the wee, the wee puffs. I wonder if I'll get all of this done with one can of butane. That would be nice. Bonk. Voila! Right, last one. And it's the last chop of the three. Bit of WD. Sit in the valleys and to the edge. And we just want to distort it. Don't trap this all the way out and try breaking it because it will just jam. But once you've got it distorting, just start breaking it off around the edge. And what we'll find is a bit more WD, I think, just to get into that gap we've just made. A wee bit of a drop. And that drifts out nicely. The other good point about doing it like this is that because, there you go, that's a nice wee fracture line out of the way through. Um, because we're not going 
on two sides. There's less risk of you going all the way through this and nicking the body. So seems to be working well on these. I don't know if it's going to work on the other ones because obviously I'm done now um, and I never want to do them again. But food for thought. So there you have it. That is how you take just about every single bush and a TVR out. There's a lot of things in this episode that a TVR owner may get snagged on. So I did want to make sure it was nice and beating had as much content as possible. So apologies if it dragged on a bit. If you have found this useful, please, for the love of God, subscribe to us down in this corner here. And please stay tuned because our next episode coming along here promises to be just as useful. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate all the love. Catch you in the next episode.